Good morning, September 15th, 2022, 9.01 a.m. Uh, this video, I'm going to tell the story what happened when I came up here to the cabin a couple days ago and fired up Fortnite on the HP 34 all-in-one that I haven't used for a couple weeks. It had to do a Fortnite update. Fortnite updates can be very large because it's downloading the entire maps and a lot of graphics and such. So on many occasions, the Fortnite update can be very large. Well, back at Studio A, that's no big deal because I have high internet speeds. Up here at the cabin, not so much. So here I'm going to show you what's going on. Uh, the screen that I was greeted with when I launched Fortnite. And to do that, I'll go over to here. No, not that one. Here. Here's a photo I took of the screen. It shows updating 8%. Well, it took a couple of minutes for it to get to 9%. So I think, uh-oh, I'm in trouble here. Except that I was doing this the night before the Fortnite live stream, but I did wind up staying up later than I normally would to get it all checked out and tested and make sure I could live stream. I did a unlisted live stream to make sure everything was working okay. And it wasn't quite working okay. I had some adjustments to make. That's the kind of thing that you would expect. So now I'm going to go switch to another photo here to show you what I looked at next. Yeah, this is a good one. So let's go here. Here I brought up Task Manager. Task Manager is a great first step to go to when you're trying to troubleshoot what is the problem, why is the computer running so slow. So I see here that I've got 16% CPU. That doesn't sound bad. 38% memory. 1% disk activity, 3% network, 27% GPO. That all looks pretty good. I'm thinking the computer seems to be doing okay. But I had a hunch that probably the problem was the internet speed here. So here I see on Epic Games Launcher showing 26.6 megabits per second when in the past I have tested the download speed here and only got like 24, 25 megabits per second. So that tells me that's clearly the bottleneck. The point of this video is not to show that bottleneck, but just to point out anytime you're having sluggishness with a computer, this is a great first place to look. Now, notice also I had Streamlabs desk OBS running at the time and Epic Games Launcher. And I think down here as I had um, in this photo, I've already closed Chrome, but I also had Chrome open when I first looked at what was going on trying to figure out what to do next. Now, let me take you to another screen. So here's where I have task manager open and a speed test and the ethernet status. So while this process was still running, let's see over here, there's still, where was that network activity? Uh, Epic Games Launcher at that point was, well, it, it, it was down to 1.5 megabit megabytes per second. No, I'm sorry, here it is. <laughs> Go, what, what? That number is not high enough. There it is, 26.6 megabits per second. Threw me also a little when I saw the capital B there because that's bytes, that's not bits. Eight bits for each byte. I ran a speed test while that download was running. Anytime you run a speed test while other internet activity is going on or other network activity is going on, you're not going to be getting a good number. Well, network activity is not such a big deal. It's more the internet speed because this was an internet speed test. So it was showing me 3.82 megabits download speed, even though I'm actually downloading at 26.6 megabits per second. So even with 26.6 running, I was still eking out another 3.82. During that test, they were probably doing a little bit of time sharing. And during that test, if I was watching this number over here, I probably would not have seen uh, as high a number in order for it to share some internet bandwidth. 3.48 megabits upload, that's a little bit shy, but normally I'm getting around four or five megabits per second here. Now, the other thing that I did is I looked at the ethernet status. I have this computer connected by ethernet, and this is showing that my speed is one gigabits per second. Now, wait a minute, what's going on there? How do I get one gigabits per second when I'm actually only getting 26.6 megabits per second download speed? Well, that is my 
computer's connection to the network here, to the router. Yes, I can get a full one gigabits per second communication between this computer and another computer that's connected through this router that's enclosed here, not going out to the internet. Down here, this is showing my bytes sent and my bytes received um, since I last restarted the computer. Now that's bytes with a capital B, not bits with a lowercase b. Okay, let's go on to another photo. Here's a graphical representation. I just, all I've done here is I went from the processes tab to the performance tab. And we're seeing here, I've clicked on ethernet. So I'm seeing the ethernet activity. Down here on this legend, we see these dot, this dotted line is gonna be the send speed. So at 1.1 megabits per second at this point in time, and that's this dotted line down here. And it's the right side of the dotted line. So I actually kind of cut off the right edge, but I happened to know that it was the same. It just was pretty static here. So that sending went up a little bit during this update process for Fortnite. There is some sending of information back to Fortnite, probably about, I don't know what's already on this computer, what graphics I already have, or maybe some sending something about how this computer is equipped, or that might've been during my speed test. You know what, I bet that's what that was, is during my speed test. And sh showing here, receiving at 26.8 megabits per second. So that corresponds to what we saw on the previous photo. And these numbers here also correspond. Moving on to the next photo. This is a performance indicator in Fortnite itself while the update is running, showing I'm uh, updating at 12%. And this, this was going very, very slow minutes before it would increment to the next number. But it gives some interesting other information just to kind of further develop the idea of what the computer is doing for this process. So this is showing the download. The downloads are typically very erratic in the in the speed each, each subsequent second. And it has so far done 3.04 gigabytes of 6.84 gigabytes. And you might still look at that number and say, well, wait a minute, that's almost half. 3.42 gigabytes over here would be 50%, but this is saying we're only at 12%. Well, the updating process may involve more than just the download. And we kind of see evidence of that down here is there's some reading from the storage media and down here, it wasn't doing any reading at all during this period of time. And then it's reading again. So here it's actually reading again from my storage media at 216 megabytes per second. So that's that's quite a lot. And by the way, this up here was gigabytes, not gigabits. Remember we were seeing, what was it? 32 um, uh, megabits per second. But now this is giga, not mega. This is giga. And it's me measured in bytes rather than bits. But that's the total file size. That's not per second. Down here, it tells us per second, 2.4 megabytes per second. Now multiply that by eight and you get 16 bits, megabits per second. And it's a little bit down right now. It goes up and down and there's also compression involved. These numbers never correspond precisely. I would, if they did, I would expect to see that a little bit higher. But there's other things the computer is also interacting with the internet uh, other than the Fortnite update. Now down here we get to write. So this is write activity, writing to my storage media, periods of time where it wasn't doing anything and then periods of time where it's doing a lot of stuff. And here it's writing at 300, uh, 381 megabytes per second. How could it possibly be doing 381 megabytes per second when we're only getting, what was it, like 26 to 30 megabits per second and bytes would be lower than that number. This is a number that's way higher. Well, what's happening I think here is the, the content is downloading in a compressed format and then the computer decompresses that and then writes it to the drive at a much higher speed. 
Down here on operations, I didn't quite figure out what they're trying to show here because this graphic never changed. Okay, let's move on to another screen. Here's where the update was finally done. I think it took about uh, somewhere from 30 to 45 minutes. I didn't really pay close enough attention because when I came back to the computer, this screen was this on. And this is where the screen was at. So the update was done. Now then I did another speed test to see what am I getting. So here I'm seeing 24.6 megabits per second download, 5.10 megabits per second upload. At this point in time, I had Streamlabs OBS open and Google Chrome open and Epic's Game Launcher down here, just idling, languishing around. <laughs> All is good, nothing to see here, we're done. So the bottom line message that I want to get across in, in this video with entitled regarding bottlenecks is when, you, when you've got a computer that's, that's sluggish, you've got to figure out where is it sluggish. I have clients all the time calling me saying, my computer's slow. It's slow with everything. And I say, well, what is it that you're doing that's slow? It's slow with everything. And, and I just, it's like pulling teeth to get it out of them. When is it? slow and so I, I don't get anything good out of them so then i go maybe check their computer out after hours or connect to it remotely and i can't see any problems so then i many times i've had to be in the office doing other work and they come around and they say my computer's slow i go well let's go over walk to your computer show me slow many times they start trying to show me slow and they say oh well it's going okay now of course, I've already asked them, how often is it so? They say, all the time. But when I go watch them, no, it's not all the time. And <laughs> it's like pulling teeth to get them to tell me, to identify when is it slow. So maybe I'll have them click around and do some other things. And eventually you get to the point where they can finally show me something that is slow. And if something that they've already demonstrated, and I tried to demonstrate and it wasn't slow, well, now I know it's an intermittent problem. So now I look for what might be intermittently going on, something else going on in the background. Now, a lot of times, some of you are going to guess this right off the bat. Maybe you're already thinking it. A lot of times, I look down in the right corner and a yellow dot or a red dot. That means updates have been downloaded. They're partially installed, waiting for the computer to restart, to finish installing updates. And I can tell them this over and over and over. And, and, and many people just takes a long time to learn that, that look down there in the bottom right corner. If you got a yellow dot or a red dot, it's telling you the computer needs to be restarted. Now there was a message that popped up on their screen at some point in the past that told them that, but people aren't watching the screen all the time. It, that message doesn't stay on very long. And they're not very conscious about the second Tuesday of the month. That's when updates typically happen. So any anomaly, anything that's not working with the right, I, not working right with the computer, I don't care what it is. Their mouse isn't working right in a particular program or something can't print, maybe only under circumstances, there's a symptom happening over here. If they got a yellow or red dot, restart the computer. It's amazing how many times that solves a problem and and often when i suggest it restart the computer to finish installing the dates that could how could that possibly be causing this particular symptom and it's surprising how many times that it does i don't i can't quite explain it i've seen some very very strange things so investigating a bottleneck determining where the bottleneck is my first tool for that pretty much always is task manager with, well, let me give that a caveat. My first resource is talking to the person. What is slow? When are, what are you doing when you're experiencing sluggishness? And they usually don't have the presence of mind to understand how to ask the question. So start giving them multiple choices. Is it slow when you launch Microsoft Word? Is it slow when you are trying to send an email? Is it slow when you click to open a file from Excel or attach a document to an email. When you click that button to attach, is it slow to bring up that window? Is it when you're clicking on folders within the browse window 
that it takes a long time for that field to populate is that when you're going to a website and it takes a long time for that website to populate, if that's a yes, which websites? There may be certain websites that they go to that when the servers for those websites are experiencing high demand, they're going to be more sluggish than other times. There are some websites somebody goes to that might perform better with a different browser. I have many clients who have certain sites and myself, my own banking website. I can work with that banking website just fine in Google Chrome un until I want to access the um, statements, monthly statements. There's a field where I need to go to a drop down list to choose which account that I want to see statements for. And that field will not open. That drop down will not work in Chrome. I have to go to Edge when I want to do that. Chrome is my usual browser. I don't mind Edge, but it's just not my default browser. So I have to, I'll click up in the address field, do Control C to copy that URL, open Edge, and click in the address bar and click paste so I can get straight to that page. Of course, I have to log in to the bank's website first. So questioning the user, absolutely critical. And there's a talent there that you have to develop. Very, very useful tool to ask them multiple choice questions. Is it when you do this, when you do this, when you do this, when you do this, get very specific with them. And if you're just on the phone with them and you can't connect remotely, have them actually do the task while you're on the phone with them and try to get them to speak out everything. Okay, so I want you to tell me when you click on the menu option called file. I want you to tell me when you click on the menu option called open. I want you to tell me when you click on the on my computer or a folder name and then tell me when that window populates so that you can get a feel for when it's, when it's happening if you're gonna to try to do it over the phone. Many times when people call me, their computer's running sluggish, they say, and when I try to connect remotely to their computer, it's running so sluggish, I can't even do that. But I will want them to restart the computer before we even try that. And oh, how much can I emphasize this? how often it is the case that they call me with whatever complaint they have and I ask them, have you tried restarting the computer yet? And, and no, I haven't. Do you think that could help? Yes, I think that could help. Let's do that before we go any further. Or here's another answer they might give me. Have you restarted the computer? And they say, yes. Okay, when, how long ago did you restart the computer? Well, five hours ago when I got to work this morning. No, 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 that doesn't count. After you got the symptom, restart the computer and then see if the symptom is there. Um, normals don't understand that. You, know, you have to get very, very specific with every detail. It is not adequate for you to take somebody's statement about what they do, like, oh, they, they'll tell you, oh, I reset the web browser. And that means something to you it may be completely something else to them. That might mean that they closed the browser and reopened it. And they think that's what you perceive as a technician as being resetting the browser. Get very, very specific. What do you mean by that? What did you actually do? What did you actually click on? I've had people tell me they restarted their computer. And I say, well, how did you actually do that? And I eventually get and they might answer that, well, I turned it off. Okay, well, how did you turn it off? Well, I shut it down. Well, how did you shut it down? Did you click on this? Now, you can't just keep asking them that question. Start asking them multiple choice questions. Did you click on the Windows Start button in the bottom left corner of, your, of the screen? And then did you click on Power? Let's see, it does say Power, doesn't it? You know, well, on that look, looks like a power button, that round circle with a, with a line at the top. Did you click on that? And then did you click on restart or did you click on shutdown? Or did you actually reach down to the computer and press the power button? I have had occasions where when I get that specific with them, what I find out they did 
is they reach to the power button and shut the computer off. And I go, what power button? Did you do it? Did you press the power button that's on the screen on top of your desk or on the box that's below your desk? And they say, well, it's on the, it's on the screen. I got a power button on the screen. I turned, that's where I turned the computer off. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's not the computer. And that's not the way we want to restart it anyway. The power button might have been doing a hybrid shutdown where it does not actually shut down all of the system components. What we want is the Windows Start button and then click on the Power button and then choose Restart. Now, depending upon the problem, we might want a full shutdown. In that case, um, there's a couple ways to do that. I've done other videos on that. And actually click on the Power button, hold down the Shift key and click on Shutdown. That should, I believe that's the right way to get a full shutdown, even if Fast Boot is enabled in Windows, Fast Startup in, in Windows, whatever it's called. Because you want to get a full shutdown for this type of shutdown and then pull a power plug. Leave the computer unplugged from power. I usually like to tell them two minutes. Sometimes I'll tell them one minute. In truth, all we need is for the capacitors and the power supply and the motherboard to fully drain, which takes less than a minute and then plug it back in. Now what you're doing there is getting a full hardware reset of the hardware components. A Windows restart does not do that. <laughs> if there's any network or internet connection or if there's a sound card problem, if there's anything with USB devices, I'll want that type of full shutdown. Anything that sounds like it could have to do with actual electronic hardware equipment. So those are some things for you to chew on. My description of what I do when a computer is being reported as being slow or anything is working slow on my computer, how to track down where is the bottleneck. I hope that's been useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.